Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. It was a cold night in Germany when I arrived at the hotel. I had flown all the way from the United Kingdom for a business meeting in Frankfurt. And since it was a long day, I decided to book a hotel nearby. Little did I know that it would be the worst decision of my life. The hotel was an old, grand building that had seen better days. It had a great location and was situated in a beautiful part of the city. As soon as I entered the hotel, I was greeted by the receptionist who seemed pleasant enough. He handed me the key of my room and I went upstairs to unpack. As soon as I entered the room, I felt apprehensive. It was very dimly lit and the curtains were drawn, which made the room look even darker. The bed was creaky and looked as if it hadn't been changed in weeks. I tried to ignore the feeling and decided to get some rest before the meeting the next day. The night was quiet and I slept well until around 3 a.m. I was suddenly woken up by strange noises coming from the room next door. It sounded like furniture was being moved around and I could hear muffled voices. I tried to ignore it and went back to sleep, but the noises continued. As the night went on, the noises grew louder and more frequent. It sounded like someone was dragging furniture across the floor, and I could hear banging and thumping noises. I started to get scared, but I convinced myself that it was just other guests making noise. Around 4 a.m., the noises stopped abruptly. It was silent, and I was relieved. But then, I heard something that made my blood run cold. It was the sound of someone breathing, but it was not a normal breath. It was a rasping, wheezing sound that made my skin crawl. I sat in bed and listened, afraid to move. The breathing grew louder and louder, and then I heard footsteps approaching my door. I could hear them getting closer and closer, until they stopped right outside my room. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, and my hands were shaking. Then, without warning, the door creaked open. I could see a figure standing in the doorway, but it was too dark to make out any features. All I could see was a pair of glowing eyes staring at me from the darkness. I tried to scream, but no sound came out of my mouth. I was frozen with fear of unable to move or speak. The figure just stood there staring at me until it suddenly turned and walked away. I was too afraid to move, too afraid to leave the safety of the bed. I stayed there all night, listening to the strange noises and trying to make sense of what had just happened. The next morning, I checked out of the hotel as quickly as I could. I never went back there again, and I never spoke of what had happened to anyone. It was a secret that I kept locked away inside me, a memory that would haunt me for years to come. As I traveled through Germany, I heard stories of other people who had stayed at that hotel. They spoke of strange noises and unexplained sightings, of figures in the darkness and glowing eyes in the night. It seemed that I was not alone in my experience. Years later, I decided to investigate the hotel and see if there were any reports of paranormal activity. I discovered that the hotel was built on the site of an old cemetery that had been moved decades ago. It was said that the spirits of the dead were still present. I was determined to find out more about the history of the hotel and the cemetery that it was built on. I spoke to locals and did research online, trying to piece together the story of what had happened. It turned out that the cemetery had been moved in the early 1900s to make way for the hotel, and the bodies were supposedly relocated to another site. However, there were rumors that not all of the bodies had been moved and that some still remained buried on the hotel grounds. There were also stories of a tragic event that had occurred at the hotel many years ago, involving the mysterious disappearance of a young girl who had been staying there with her family. The more I dug, the more I realized that there was a dark history associated with the hotel. Many guests had reported strange occurrences, from hearing voices and seeing apparitions to feeling cold spots and unexplained sensations. Some had even claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of a young girl wandering the halls of the hotel. I decided to revisit the hotel, this time armed with more knowledge about its history. As soon as I entered the hotel, I could feel the presence of something otherworldly. The air was thick with a sense of disquiet, and I could hear strange noises coming from the walls. As I walked down the hallway towards my room, I saw a figure standing at the end of the hall. It was the ghostly figure of a young girl, staring at me with glowing eyes. I froze in my tracks, unable to move or speak. The figure just stood there, staring at me until it suddenly disappeared into thin air. I knew then that the stories were true, 
and that the hotel was indeed haunted by the spirits of the dead. I spent the rest of the night in my room listening to the strange noises and trying to make sense of what had just happened. I felt a sense of sadness and sorrow, knowing that so many lives had been lost and that their spirits were trapped in the hotel. The next morning, I left the hotel and never went back again. But the memory of that night stayed with me for years and I often wondered if the spirits of the dead had found peace or if they were still trapped in that old haunted hotel. In the end, I realized that some things are best left unexplained and that there are forces in this world that we may never fully understand. The hotel remains a mystery, a place of darkness and despair that continues to haunt those who dare to enter its walls. I remember it being a hot summer night, sometime in the middle of July and I had been traveling for hours. I was exhausted and needed a place to stay for the night. I found myself in a small town with limited options for accommodation, and the only hotel I could find was a rundown place on the outskirts of town. It was an old building with peeling paint and a sign that flickered on and off. The name of the hotel was barely visible, but it was called the Riverside Hotel. I walked into the lobby and immediately I felt uneasy. The receptionist was a middle-aged woman who looked tired and disinterested. She handed me a key without saying a word and directed me to the stairs. As I made my way up to my room, I couldn't help but notice how dimly lit and poorly maintained the hotel was. When I reached my room, I was surprised at how small it was. The bed was a twin size and there was barely any space to move around. The furniture was old and worn out and there was a musty smell in the air. I didn't have much choice though, so I put my bags down and tried to get some rest. But my rest was anything but peaceful. That first night, I had a nightmare about a woman watching me. She had long hair and a sad expression on her face. In the dream, she would just stand there and watch me sleep. When I woke up, I felt like the woman was still there, watching me. I turned on the light, but there was no one there. I tried to go back to sleep, but I kept having the same nightmare over and over again. Every time I woke up, I felt like the woman was still there watching me. I started to feel like I was going crazy. Finally, I decided to get up and do some research on the hotel. I went online and searched for information about the Riverside Hotel. I was shocked to discover that there were rumors of the hotel being haunted. Some people claimed to have seen a woman in a white dress wandering the halls, while others reported hearing strange noises at night. It was said that the hotel was built on land that was once a cemetery, and the spirits of the deceased were said to haunt the hotel. Then I found the article that sent chills down my spine. It turns out that a woman had taken her life in the very room that I was staying in. Her name was Sarah, and she had been a local artist. She had checked into the hotel one night, and the next morning her lifeless body was found in the bathtub. The article didn't give much detail about the circumstances of her death, but it was enough to make me feel sick to my stomach. I was too scared to stay in the room any longer, so I packed my bags and went down to the lobby. I tried to explain the situation to the receptionist, but she just shrugged and told me that the hotel had no other rooms available. I couldn't believe it. I was stuck in a haunted hotel with no way out. The rest of the night was a blur. I tried to sleep on the chair in the lobby, but every time I closed my eyes, I felt I was being watched. I could hear strange noises coming from down the hall, and the air was thick with a sense of fear. When morning finally came, I couldn't get out of that hotel fast enough. As I left the hotel, I couldn't help but wonder what had driven Sarah to take her own life in that room. Was it something about the hotel? Was it something that happened to her before she checked in? I may never know the answers to those questions, but one thing is for sure, that hotel stay had a profound impact on me. Years later, I decided to do more research on the Riverside Hotel and the mysterious circumstances surrounding Sarah's death. I discovered that the hotel had a long and sordid history. It had been built in the early 1900s and over the years, it had been the site of numerous violent crimes and suicides. In fact, Sarah was just one of many people who had died in the hotel. I also learned that the hotel had changed ownership multiple times over the years, and each new owner had tried to cover up the hotel's dark past. The current owner had even gone so far as to deny that the hotel was haunted, despite the numerous reports of strange activity. But the more I delved into the history of the Riverside Hotel, the more convinced I became that it was truly haunted. I read accounts of guests who had seen apparitions and heard unexplained noises. I even talked to a former employee who claimed to have witnessed a full-bodied apparition in the basement. 
it was clear to me that something sinister was going on at the Riverside Hotel. And yet, the hotel continued to operate, attracting unsuspecting guests who had no idea of the hotel's dark past. Several years ago, my family and I were planning to go on a much needed vacation to the mountains. We were looking for a cozy and affordable place to stay, and after some research, we found a small hotel that looked perfect for our needs. The pictures on the hotel's website showed a charming and rustic building, nestled in the midst of a beautiful forest. The rooms appeared comfortable and clean, and there were plenty of activities in the surrounding area to keep us entertained. As we arrived at the hotel in the early afternoon, we were greeted by the caretakers, an older couple who appeared welcoming and hospitable. They showed us to our room, which was located on the third floor of the hotel. The room was spacious and clean, with a comfortable bed and a breathtaking view of the forest. However, as night approached, we started hearing strange noises coming from the hallway outside our room. It sounded like someone was walking up and down the hallway, as if pacing back and forth. The noises were faint at first, but as the night went on, they became increasingly noticeable. They sounded like whispers and footsteps, and they were nerve-wracking. We tried to ignore them and go back to sleep, but they continued throughout the night, making it difficult for us to get any rest. The next morning, we went down to the lobby for breakfast, and we noticed that the caretakers were acting strangely. They were whispering to each other and exchanging glances in our direction, almost as if they were talking about us. We tried to brush it off and enjoy our breakfast, but the tension in the atmosphere was palpable. After breakfast, we decided to go out and explore the surrounding area. The scenery was stunning, and we enjoyed hiking and taking the sights. However, as we wandered through the forest, it was an ominous sensation, and it made us all feel uncomfortable. As we returned to the hotel in the evening, things took a turn for the worse. As we were getting ready for bed, there was a loud and persistent knock on the door. My father went to answer it, and he saw the caretakers standing outside with a strange look on their faces. They informed us that they needed to do some maintenance work in our room and asked us to leave for a while. We didn't think much of it at the time, so we left the room and went down to the lobby. But as we waited, we noticed that something was wrong. The caretakers were taking an unusually long time, and we could hear strange noises coming from our room. It sounded like someone was drilling or digging, but we couldn't be sure. After about an hour, we decided to go back to our room and investigate. But when we opened the door, we were completely taken aback by what we saw. The room was in complete disarray, with furniture and belongings strewn about haphazardly. The walls were covered in scratches and strange symbols, and there was an inexplicable odor that lingered in the air. We attempted to confront the caretakers, but they were nowhere to be found. It was apparent that they had deliberately sabotaged our room, and the extent of the damage was staggering. We quickly packed our belongings and departed the hotel, never to return again. Even to this day, we are still stunned by what happened at that hotel. We never received an explanation from the caretakers, and we never reported the incident to the authorities. We simply wanted to put the experience behind us and move on with our lives. But on occasion, we still ponder about that fateful stay and wonder about the events that transpired during our time at the hotel. It wasn't just the noise and strange behavior of the caretakers that made us feel troubled, but it was the overall sense of being viewed and unwelcome during our stay. It was as if someone or something was observing us at all times, which made us feel on edge and anxious. The strange symbols on the walls of our room were especially disconcerting. They appeared to be some sort of cryptic messages or symbols that we couldn't decipher. It was as if someone had purposefully defaced our room with them, but for what reason we couldn't fathom. As we left that hotel and drove away, we noticed that there were no other guests or cars in the parking lot. It was a surreal and eerie sight, considering how busy the hotel had appeared when we arrived. It made us wonder what kind of business the caretakers were running and what they were trying to hide. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.